This is Jimmy with Cascade Components, and we are going to do a quick install and bleed video for our slab mineral oil calipers. Um, we're going to pretend that this here is a whole bike, not just a fork with a, a handlebar and stem. And we're going to pretend that this brake is actually the correct brake and not the rear brake off of a cargo bike. So let's go over the tools that are required for this install really quick. So we've got a two and a half, a three, a four, and a five millimeter Allen wrench. Um, we've got a syringe, mineral oil syringe. This is from the SRAM uh, mineral oil bleed kit. Um, we have a bleeding edge fitting uh, that has been attached to the tube and hose from the same mineral oil bleed kit. Shimano cup for the lever, some alcohol for cleaning afterwards, paper towels also for cleaning, of course, and then some uh, Shimano mineral oil. And this here is the caliper that we will be installing. Along with all of those, uh, for this bleed procedure, you will have to strap or somehow secure your brake in the squeezed position. So we're just going to use this little piece of rope right here to, uh, to hold it against the bar. All right, so let's dive in then. So I'll take our five millimeter Allen wrench and we're just, these bolts are already loose. Just pull the caliper off the bike. This is a uh, prototype caliper. Obviously it is not, not a stock caliper. We're gonna pretend it is. The tool that you will need to remove your, uh, your caliper from the brake hose varies. Um, for this particular one, um, it is a T25 because again, it's a prototype caliper. So I'm just taking a uh, paper towel because this will drip a little bit when I break it free. So unthread the banjo bolt, set the old caliper to the side. This caliper, uh, it, it comes with its own banjo bolt since it, since it replaces so many different calipers um, and they all have different banjo bolts. We figured instead of trying to design a caliper that's compatible with a whole range of banjo bolts, we would just design it around one specific one and ship it with that. So it does have a banjo bolt with it. Uh, there are seals on the banjo bolt. So you just take your old banjo bolt out. You can choose to reuse these seals. This one's kind of stuck on there and oily. Um, so you, you can choose to reuse these seals if you want, or uh, the banjo bolt that it comes with has seals all ready to go. So I'm just gonna set the banjo bolt over there. I'm gonna reuse the seal because I like reusing things that are in okay condition. All right, so take the banjo bolt out of the new mineral oil caliper. It's got those seals on it. I'll just leave those right there. Now you wanna make sure that you have the, uh, there's the one seal that goes on the top side of the banjo bolt, and then there's another seal that goes on the bottom side of the banjo bolt. Um, if you're reusing your seals, sometimes, you know, one will get stuck like that, or sometimes that one will fall out. Just make sure they're there, otherwise it won't seal. All right, so now just pop that banjo bolt through and thread it into the caliper. Then take our three millimeter Allen key, just tighten that down. All right, so now that we've got that installed on the brake line, we're gonna go ahead and give it a bleed. So as with our code caliper, uh, there is a particular orientation that this is designed to be bled in, and that would be with these post mount surfaces perfectly vertical. So I've got the fork held here so that they're in that orientation. So I'm just bolting it up to the fork, makes it easier since it holds it there for you. So we're gonna pop in the uh, bleed block. Um, any old bleed block will do as long as it is the right width. Um, SRAM code bleed blocks happen to fit in this caliper. 
They're snug, but they fit, which is kind of nice because then you don't actually really need the, uh, the pad pin to hold anything in place, but we're just gonna leave it there anyway. All right, so we've got that all set up, oriented for a bleed. We're gonna go and get the, uh, the bleed cup thrown onto the lever. This unit in particular here is a Shimano Z lever. Rub that on in there until it is snug. Now we're going to attach our bleed syringe to the caliper. It's already loose, but sometimes you, you might need to use a four millimeter Allen key to break the bleed screw loose if you've got it tight already. All right, so now we're gonna go and add some mineral oil to the bleed cup. Now we've, we've left the, uh, the syringe empty because the first thing we're going to actually do is pull fluid down through the brake line. That's filled up. All right, and now we're just gonna pop out a little stopper. All right, so like I was saying before, first thing we're gonna do is just pull brake fluid down through the line. This ensures that you don't have any bubbles in between the lever and the banjo fitting. All right, so now that we've got some fluid pulled through there, just gonna close this off for a second. Now we're going to take our piece of rope, maybe you have a strap, whatever it may be, hook it around there, and we're gonna pull the lever to the bar. Now this is important to do because the diaphragm on Shimano levers isn't able to handle a large amount of back pressure. If you don't hold the, the uh, lever to the bar, um, it can, um, and oftentimes does, pop the diaphragm um, or it displaces it from the, uh, the boss or a feature that it holds on to. So just make sure you do that or you might have a leaking lever. All right, so now we're going to give the caliper a bleed. So loosen the bleed screw there so that we're open again. And just gonna pull a slight vacuum. Then pressurize and back to vacuum. Back to pressurize. And we're gonna do this a few times, just going back and forth until there are no more bubbles. All right, so now that we've got this at a point where as we pull a vacuum, there aren't really any bubbles flowing out of the caliper, we are going to let the lever return. And we're now going to flush fluid back and forth through the brake hose. So I'll take the bleed syringe, make sure you don't get any bubbles in the hose that you push through. And we're just gonna pressurize that, push fluid back up through the lever. And then now that the syringe is almost empty, gonna pull fluid back down in. Just be careful that you don't accidentally empty the entire cup and pull air into your brake line. And we're gonna cycle some more fluid through. I always just, I do this a few times just to make sure that, you know, there aren't any lingering brake line air bubbles. All right, so now that we've done that a couple of times, we're going to close off the bleed screw and pump the brake up. It's usually helpful if you adjust your, uh, your reach all the way out, it makes it easier to pump the brake up. All right, so get that brake pumped up. And then we're gonna squeeze it to the bar and just crack the bleed port close it again and repeat. Doing this can be, uh, can be helpful to just break any 
random little bubbles that might still be in the system free. Now that we've done that a couple of times, I'm gonna strap the lever back to the bar and we're gonna just bleed the caliper. Make sure there are no little bubbles sitting at the top that have worked their way out. It's looking pretty good. Let the brake lever turn. And we'll just push a little more fluid through just to make sure we're all good on both ends. Close off the bleed port. Disconnect the bleed syringe. Take that guy off the side. Now we're gonna take our four millimeter Allen and torque down the bleed port. The torque spec on this is five Newton meters, which is about that much. And pull our pin out and bleed block. And then you wanna grab your, uh, your old pads or maybe you got new pads. As far as pad compatibility goes, um, these are TRP pads. Uh, any Shimano pad that has the same profile, which would be XTs, Saints, Zs, um, will all fit. Uh, just keep in mind that you can't use the thinned Saint brake pads. I'm gonna slide those in. We're just gonna leave the pad pin floating there for a second because we're going to cycle the pistons and make sure that they are uh, nice and centered. Don't even have to tighten the wheel, just let the wheel sit. And just getting the caliper actually in a better position on the post mount. All right, so now, now we're just gonna give the levers a squeeze to move the pistons in. Uh, they're not not perfect, but for uh, for illustration, we will call that good enough. If you want to try and get your pistons perfectly even, you can just push them back in, or push the side that you want to move in back in, and pump the brakes up again to your heart's content. I'm just centering the pads on the rotor. All right, now we're gonna put the stopper back in to cup. Unthread that. And take our two and a half in the cap and reinstall. A little extra fluid coming out. And I'm just gonna take our alcohol and paper towel, give that a spray, and wipe it down. Mineral oil won't kill your paint, but it's just kinda, it's everywhere. I'm gonna just readjust the reach on the lever to what it was before. there. So there you have it. That is the installation of our slab mineral oil caliper on a Shimano brake. Uh, the same process for TRP. Um, the debate levers are more similar to the code process, but more or less the same as this. And yeah, there we go.